They overcame all obstacles through ingenuity, dogged determination, and perseverance. The storied history and pedigree of the U.S. Navy's military construction arm, the Seabees, offers a unique narrative threaded into the American military fabric of history. Created at the onset of World War II and quickly growing to 325,000 men strong, the Seabees toiled on the battlefields around the world, providing the facilities needed by our armed forces to defeat our enemies. During World War II, bases had actually been started before the bombing of Pearl Harbor, and there was a need to complete those bases, and now that war was declared, there was going to be a need for a lot more bases to operate from. And they knew that they could not rely on your standard troops and everything, but they needed to bring journeyman constructionmen into the services who had the skills and abilities and knowledge to build these bases with minimal direction. The most enjoyable part, I believe, is the work with the other men and women in the facilities. Uh, you run across and meet some very intelligent, sharp, dedicated people. And that's, uh, you kind of soak that up. That's, uh, that's very rewarding. Everywhere they go, uh, they can fight if necessary and defend themselves, but their primary mission is to go there and make life better for everyone else and give them the facilities that they need to operate from. Founded in 1991, the CEC CB Historical Foundation is a nonprofit organization dedicated to preserving the proud heritage and rich history of the Navy's Civil Engineer Corps and the Seabees. Civil Engineer Corps is a staff corps within the Navy whose uh, membership is made up of trained engineers and architects who are familiar with how to build buildings, plan things, operate them, and maintain them. The foundation was created because it was recognized that there more needed to be done to help preserve the history and heritage of the CBs and the Civil Engineer Corps. Our membership is open to anyone who shares that philosophy. Over the years we've developed a database that contains the names and addresses of some 75,000 CB and CEC veterans. Currently, the foundation is spearheading a nationwide effort to provide a state-of-the-art museum, one which tells the story and accomplishments of the Navy's legendary CBs and their role in protecting our nation. Owned and operated by the U.S. Navy and located in Port Wyneme, California, the $12 million building is a gift from the CEC CB Historical Foundation. Beginning with their creation at the onset of World War II, through Korea, Vietnam, and the current effort in the Middle East, the story of the Seabees will be told in an immersive context, ensuring that visitors gain a broader understanding of the events being told. The CB Museum has existed since 1947, and in actuality, it's the second oldest official Navy museum in the country, the first oldest being the Naval Academy in Annapolis. The CB Museum has a very, very rich collection. We have about 11,000 artifacts and about 9,000 linear feet of exhibits, and we're going to be able to tell the story so much more thoroughly and more dynamically than we've ever been able to before. In the new museum, we'll be able to have interactive exhibits. So for example, when people come here, they're actually going to be transported into Main Street, USA in World War II, feel as though they're recruited as a CB in World War II, and then go through the entire CB experience. The design of the new building was made to specifically highlight the kinds of materials that CBs used. So for example, in the main hall, which we refer to as the Grand Hall, the floor is completely polished concrete. It's not sealed with anything, it's just raw concrete. One of the main goals of the new CB Museum facility is because we're going to be located off the base and have complete public access, we're going to have an entirely new role in the local education. We're hoping to develop educational programs that um, are in sync with the state standards of learning so that we can bring children in here to learn more about both the military, the history of the importance of the military, and more importantly, what kind of jobs are available in the military for people today. The Navy is allowed to own and operate the museum, but they are not allowed by a congressional directive to build a museum, improve one, expand one. And that's where the foundation comes in. We're the partner who raises the money to create the museum, and then we gift that to the Navy for them to own and operate. Locally, what's been really interesting is people want to come here. They want to find out what we have available. They want to know when they can come and visit. And I really think that this new museum is going to be a huge community asset. What I enjoyed most of my time with the Seabees 
was the intensity of the work, uh, the interesting aspects of the work in that it ranged all the way from building two-story barracks to paving roads and to building hospitals and always uh, these facilities were needed yesterday and to watch CBs respond to those kinds of tasks was a real joy. Even today, uh, older CBs will ask you the question, do we still have CBs? And they don't know that even though they were once a CB. So it's something that uh, this museum is hopefully going to try to correct. Uh, over time, uh, people not only will know about the CBs as they started, but they will know about the CBs of today that are still actively in combat situations and doing what CBs have always done, very quietly supporting uh, our fighting men and women. Our goal right now is to get the exhibits and displays in here that will transform this building into a marvelous museum. We have a $9 million goal in front of us to, uh, to, get, that done, to get that accomplished and to get the museum open. When we talk to people, whether it's you know, veterans themselves or the construction companies across the country, we're getting a very positive response. We've gotten tremendous support, uh, both from the individuals themselves and from corporations and foundations across the country. The U.S. Navy is a global force for good. The goal of this museum is really to teach people who come and visit it what the CBs do and what role they play in the military. I don't believe the general public knows uh, as much about the CBs as they could, and a facility like this will help us better tell that story as to what CBs do and uh, what conditions they've had to work under over the many years they've been in existence. I've been proud to be a CB for 30 years uh, because of the work that we left in place, and I think we helped improve humanity around the world. For those who don't know about CBs, I hope they leave saying, I had no idea that we had military people that could do those things. And the fact that they do those things, not only for our military people, but they do humanitarian things for people throughout the entire world. And for the young people that come here and leave, that they will leave understanding better what engineers and craftsmen do and can do, particularly in the military that as I walk through the building, I literally pinch myself and think of the days when we weren't sure we could raise the money to rehab the old museum. And here we have this magnificent building. Uh, I still find it hard to believe that we did it. Over 325,000 uh, CB served in World War II and accomplished great things. That's a story that should not be forgotten. And those CBs still exist today and are carrying on that mission. They're in Afghanistan right now. We have some 3,000 of them there now. And it's a story of accomplishment. It's a story of uh, you know, determination to a man. The one comment I hear from them is it was the greatest adventure of my life. No matter what challenge our armed forces face, the Seabees are there in war and in peace. Learn more about their one-of-a-kind legacy at the U.S. Navy CB Museum, celebrating the can-do spirit. For more information or to donate, go to cbhf.org or call the number on your screen.